You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler and joining me today is Liana Taylor. Now, Liana's the director of the Australian Institute of Applied Mindfulness and she's also the operator of the Mindfulness Centre and she joins us from Adelaide in Australia. Liana, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. I'm glad to be here. Now, Liana, that's, that's a, a mouthful, the Australian Institute of Applied Mindfulness. I guess it begs the question, what is mindfulness? It's a very good question. Twelve years ago when we started, when I started teaching around Australia, uh, we had to, the word, nobody had ever heard the word mindfulness and now everyone talks about it and it's kind of part of the common language. Fundamentally, mindfulness is a practice of um, being able to focus your attention in the present moment on what's going on and not getting caught up with the chatter in your own mind. That's fundamentally what mindfulness training is about, learning to do that. Yeah. That sounds very easy to say, but doesn't sound quite so easy to do. As you were saying, and I was thinking, well, the chatter in my mind's often overwhelming. But uh, tell us how, how do you apply this? What, what is it you do and who do you do it for? Uh, how do I apply it? Mostly I teach health professionals around Australia with the Institute. Um, right. And I do quite a bit of uh, corporate mindfulness speaking, though that's more speeches, keynotes, um, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, with the health professionals, I'm actually training them how to learn to do mindfulness, how to teach mindfulness, what it means to have a mindful approach. And they're mostly using it to deal with depression, to prevent or uh, depression or to help people come out of depression more quickly. And certainly for a whole range of health conditions, stress, um, certainly anxiety, trauma, anything else that's going on. Now, I didn't mention when I introduced you, you are a clinical psychologist. And the reason I mentioned that you're a clinical psychologist here is I don't want people to go, wow, this is something really weird out of left field, yeah. um, that, that it does have um, a place where it fits within scientific clinical practice. Well, in fact, mindfulness is, uh, and mindfulness training, particularly the MBCT, which is a particular program, is pretty much the leading edge for managing depression around the world. Mm. Um, and uh, mindfulness came into the health sector back in the 1990s when the World Health Organization were looking to the economic future and what was going to be the biggest health burden. They thought that by the year 2020, depression was going to be the biggest health burden in the Western world. And because of that, they they pulled together a project team to figure out what kind of therapies could we use to heal people from depression so that it doesn't become this major health burden in the Western world. And so, in fact, it was the World Health Organization that set up the program, and the result of that project was that mindfulness was the single thing that made the biggest difference in people coming out of depression, and even more importantly, for not dropping back into depression. There's been a huge amount of research on it for the last decade and a half. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's something that we've talked about reasonably often on the radio in one form or another. And, uh, and quite often when I'm talking to clinical psychologists and they're talking to me about what is their current practice methodology, there'll be a little shade of mindfulness in there. There'll be elements of it um, tucked away and, uh, and, it, and it seems to have entered a mainstream practice fairly dramatically. Very dramatically, I think. Uh, I think for some of us, I was teaching mindfulness in a meditation centre long before, in the 90s, um, Mm. and started three meditation uh, communities. So long before it became so well established in in clinical um, settings and education settings and now leadership, even the parliament in the UK. Um, So before it was established, but... I think the thing with mindfulness, not only does it give you a philosophical lens, like a a different perspective on your experience and some tools to help you kind of bring your focus back into the present, not worrying about what happened in the past, what's happening in the future, not comparing yourself to others, you're better than, worse than somebody else is. So 
just actually focusing on what's happening in the moment. Um, so you get the tools to that. But it also teaches us to be kind and compassionate to ourselves um, and to be very present with what's going on. And it's interesting because in psychology, as in business, any, any time in life, the relationship we have with other people is the single most important part of the outcome. You know, just as I said, in therapy, as in business, as in life. And if you're in a relationship with a client and you're the more present you are, really just listen to their story instead of off in your head um, making assessments or judgments or taking people down a path that's not really relevant um, because you're not really there paying attention. Um, that, that capacity of being more present is the, is the single difference that, that uh, meaningful difference, the difference that makes the difference. So that's why mindfulness has become so popular because there, there's so many layers to it. And it just, it just ultimately, in addition to all the skills and the philosophical lens, just about really fully being present to the situation that's going on. Yes, that's, that's one of those things that's, easy to say and hard to do you know it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting because um uh <laughs> um being present is actually really simple it's just not easy to do all the time yes yes and when we teach it we often talk to people about you know just thinking in your life about things you love to do you know playing football or watching television or playing musical instruments you know or even holding a baby or um you know something that you really love in those moments, the chat has just dropped away. You're just present yes. with what you're doing. So we all know how to do it. And the mindfulness training helps us learn to do that um, when we want it, like when we need it. So not just when we're doing the thing that we love, but all the other times. Well, I, I interviewed a, a sportsman and, and we're talking about golf and uh, I made much the same comment that it was, it was easy, easy to say and hard to do. He said, well... Look, the game itself is simple. You get a stick and you hit a ball into a hole. How hard can that be? Um, <laughs> it's just that it takes a lifetime to master. So, um, yeah. Mindfulness is, a, I guess, a, a, um, a practice that is ongoing. Now, you mentioned it in relationship to meditation before. How do the two fit together? It's a really good question. Mindf meditation has two aspects, and the two aspects of meditation include you know, really focusing your attention on something, uh, letting the chatter of the mind go quiet for those who do get there and just coming into that real stillness. And that's the kind of meditation they talked a lot about in the 80s and 90s post the psychedelic era, era, you know, and everybody thinks about that as meditation. But the other important aspect of meditation is mindfulness. So that, for example, if you're focusing on your breath or focusing on a sound, you know, in the meditation, and a thought arises or another sound calls at your attention. Um, mindfulness is that moment that you have that you really notice what's happening. You notice the chatter in your head. You, rather than being critical of it or argue with it or be annoyed, you just let it be there and bring the focus back. And so all meditation is kind of like on a seesaw that you have on one side the mindfulness and on the other side the concentration, that single point of focus. And so you're always moving between. And some meditations, formal meditations, you're more in the concentration. Some formal meditations, you're more in the mindfulness. And so mindfulness is a form of, oh, an aspect, not a form of, an aspect of meditation. Uh, and as I said, you know, when you're playing golf or surfing or riding a motorbike and you're having to focus your attention, um, from an Eastern tradition perspective, that's a light state of mindfulness, a light state of meditation, attention focused chatter quiet, just doing what you need to do. Liana explained um, like a true expert. One of the things that I love about my job is I get to talk to people who are experts in what they do and no one else can ever make complex things sound simple and simple enough that a child can understand them um, <laughs> with, without, you know, it being when someone who's not an expert tries, it's always a very long and, and turgid conversation. When you talk to someone who's an expert, and you truly are, it's so simple, even I can understand it. Uh, so thank, thank you for that, and thank you for being with us today. Now, yeah, for, people that we, for people that we've touched today, um, and they've gone, oh, I, I, I want to know more about that. How can I get in touch? How can they reach out to you? 
Uh, they can reach out to us certainly by the website, which is www.theaiam.com.au. Stands for Australian Institute of Applied Mindfulness. Certainly reach the website. Certainly can phone us in Australia um, on 0882720046 or send us an email mind at theaim.com.au. So it'd be lovely to hear from anybody. Now, if you've been listening to those phone numbers and URLs and, and you've confused by them, they'll be on our website. So we'll have the links there and the phone number as well. Liana, it's been a pleasure having you with us, as I said. Thank you very much. Liana Taylor is the director of the Australian Institute of Applied Mindfulness and practices at the mindfulnesscenter.com. Liana, thank you for being with us. Lovely to have been here. Now, if you just joined us, then you've missed a fascinating conversation about mindfulness and its application. But the good news is on our website, we have a full transcript and you can read the interview from top to bottom. We also have an audio archive available where you can listen to it all over again on iTunes, YouTube and SoundCloud. And the links to all of those are on our website. You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler and you can find all that content at hpr.fm.